Is God ever, ever going to say enough? But will God always give us an opportunity? Well, the title of this last segment that we're doing is America is Dying from Lack of Prophetic Knowledge. This is the word in high resolution. I'm Lance Hoppus. This is Pastor Kurt. This is the word in high resolution, and we're bringing around into the fourth segment of this series of study that we've been doing. America is dying from a lack of prophetic knowledge. I'll go so far as to tell you they're, they're dying from a lack of biblical knowledge because our nation has become secular. And that's, that's uh, sad for me. I know it's sad for you and, and others that really truly care. Uh, we, are, we have left the Word of God, and we've seen in, this, in part one, we shared with you all of the reasons why uh, that, that, that we have done these things and how far we have stepped away. I want to encourage you to do that. We, we, we started talking about some, some moments that you can have in, in, throughout scriptures that, that prove that God will sometimes forgive us uh, if, we, if we do it in time. Uh, we also have talked about some moments where God said you're completely out of time in our in part three here where you had the opportunity, uh, you had the opportunity to repent earlier, but God says not now. You're not going to be able to repent. In fact, he told us not even to pray for him. Don't even, don't even uh, come right. in, in, in intercessions to me. Don't, don't even think about it because I'm going to destroy them. And I want to read that verse for you, and then I want to wrap all of this up so that you'll have a very clear understanding of why we broke this up into a four-part series so that you have the opportunity. I want to encourage you again to share this with all of your friends and family. All we care about is that the word gets out. That's all we're, that's all we're doing. In Jeremiah 7 and 16, God is saying to us very clearly here through Jer uh, Jeremiah, he says, therefore, do not pray for this people. Now, again, he's talking about the people of Nineveh who had completely left the reservation that become so defiled, so bad. He says, therefore, do not pray for these people, nor lift up a cry, a cry or a prayer for them, nor make intercessions to me capitalized towards God, for I will not hear you. Do you not see what they do in the cities of Judah and the streets of Jerusalem? Uh, we left there with the question mark because the question mark is this. What do you do when you see something that's wrong? You bury your head in the sand? Do you, do you, uh, do you talk to your neighbors and family about it and say, hey, this isn't right? And, and then beyond that, what do you do? You know, it's important, especially here in the United States, that when you're voting, that you're voting for people that are going to follow a biblical timeline that are going to follow the mandate that God has given to us. But do you see that in American politics today? Very, very few. There's a few, but not many. And this is so important for us because when you step away from the Word of God and you get people that are making laws and, and decisions that affect you and affect your walk with God, at some point you have to say enough is enough. You, you, you have to make a decision. Am I going to stay in this nation or am I going to leave this nation? And both Lance and I, we love America. Uh, we love everything it stands for with the exceptions of these, 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 these huge sins that we've made as a nation. And, and we're sounding the alarm bell saying, look, people, let's get back to basics here because if we don't, we're in very, very real trouble. And, and so... The reason why Jeremiah 7, 16 is so important, I wanted you to see, not many people know, Lance, that if you go to church, I mean, where do you ever hear a pastor telling you that God's going to say, I ain't going to listen to you. Don't even bother praying. Never heard it. Yeah, but there it is, scripturally. Oh, I know it, but I've never heard it. Check it Check it for yourselves. You'll, you'll I'm see, sure maybe you'll, somebody has somewhere. But oh, I, 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 you know. It's, maybe you, I wouldn't listen. You never, you never want to say I'm the only one. I'm, I'm not saying that, but I'm just saying, you know, they're, they're teaching a bunch of stuff that really uh, has very little revel uh, reverence for the understanding of the holiness of God. And, and, and God 
if you can if you can see through it in the scripture reveals his holiness in this scripture what's important to him and what's not important so what i wanted you to see that after jeremiah receives his instructions not to pray for the people of judah he pre-warned them or he forewarned them of the forthcoming judgment that was coming to them the people were going to be destroyed for the 70 years into the babylon ca uh, captivity and that the land would remain desolate during that in time period and that's in fact would happen. In his foreknowledge, the Lord knew that Judah would not have this Nineveh or the Second Chronicles 7 and 14 moment. And again, this, the, for those of you that are maybe just joining us, the, the Second Chronicles 7 14 moment is simply this. God said, if my people who call upon my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, I will turn there, I will turn from their wicked ways, and then I will hear from heaven, and I will forgive their sin, and that I will heal their land. I, I don't want you to miss this. If Judah had, had, uh, would have repented, then God would have certainly have, have relented his judgment upon them. But the question I have for you, and I want to talk about it, Lance, is does America... Does America have a national repentance in us? Does it exist? The fact of the matter is, is only God knows for sure whether we do or not. But I have to tell you as a pastor, as I pay attention to what's going on, not only here in America, but what's happening around the world, I don't see it happening. And I wish I was wrong about that. I started this message, Lance and I, is, is America approaching a Hosea 4 and 6 moment? That's where we started this message. Because if America, like Judah, has passed the point of no return and has no national repentance in its future, well, then I believe that America needs to prepare for that Hosea 4 and 6 moment. What was that? I want to give this verse because they need to hear it, and then I want to hear what you have to say. What God said in Hosea 4 and 6 was simply this. For my people, who are his people again? The Jewish people and Christians because we were adopted into the family of God. He's, he's included us, so he's saying to us, I'm praying to you, Christian. I'm praying to you, the Jewish people. He's saying, my people are destroyed for their lack of knowledge. Again, this is Hosea 4 and 6. My people are destroyed for their lack of knowledge because you have rejected knowledge. Because you've rejected the word of God, because you've rejected the prophetic word of God, I'm also going to reject you as priests for me. Because you have forgotten the law of your God, I will also forget your children. Did you hear that? Not only is God saying, am I going to get you? I'm going to get your children. I, I, I didn't say this. This is what God had to say. I'm going to step out of the Bible for a moment. And we're going to talk about some current events real quick. Okay. I'm just going to highlight them. Okay. Because it goes right along with what you're, you're asking. Are we on the edge of that moment? Right. Macron of France made the statement that it looks like Europe needs to develop its own military to stand against and defend themselves against the United States. Can you imagine such a thing from France? Now they have joined together with 10 nations, small ones, but they have formed and put together a military in Europe, a European military. Mm -hmm. China is politically on the move and militarily on the move throughout the world. Russia is militarily and politically on the move throughout the world. Back up to President Obama. President Obama was in Alaska and Russia stood off our shoreline with their warships just outside the international waterways and flew their fighter aircraft overhead 
as harassment. Iranian warships come into our Gulf of Mexico. Our coastlines are lined continuously with foreign warships facing us. Earthquakes across our nation, 81, 81 just in the first nine days of January in Alaska. Three across our nation, from Maryland to Oklahoma to San Francisco, almost simultaneously. The axis of the earth has shifted, and it keeps on shifting. You can look all this up online, folks. Look at your, look at your nation in the broad view. I say it again and again and again. Look at the infrastructure of a nation. You can see the direction of a nation. God lifted this nation out of nothingness in 241 years. And now you see it's just imploding. Our skylines are eroding. They're not keeping up with the rest of the world. We have abortion in our nation that is rampant, crime in our nation that's rampant. You can't see this on TVs in Europe. I've been there. I've watched. You can't see the violence. You can't see the sex. You can't see the crime on TV, the horrible comedy that's on TV that is vulgar, rude, ugly on Primetime TV, the videos that our children are watching, the music that they're listening to. You know, I, I'm not an old-time holy roller pastor, but you, you know what I'm saying? And yeah, I'm but, saying that with respect. Well, I know, but you, you, you know, you sound like that. To the general population, you sound like that. That's okay. But that's, but that's the difference between uh, uh, one that is filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and, and one that is not. The nation I grew up in wasn't this way. We have to get back to Well, God. we, you know, it wasn't as bad. Uh, we, it, the nation was, was, was as evil then as it is, as it is today. It's just today it's more blatant and it's in your face. And, and because, because they don't change, Lance. I mean, I, I, you know, you can look back and you can see a simpler time. The sins of the and, fathers are built upon by their children. That's, that's correct. Yeah. And, and so uh, what Lance is saying is, is correct. You know, you can start looking around and see as a nation where we have, where we have fallen. And, and if we, again, if we don't get back to a point of repentance, um, we are going to be destroyed for our lack of prophetic knowledge because God said so. He said that because you've rejected my knowledge, I'm going to reject you as priests. And not only am I going to reject you, he says, you've, com- you've completely forgotten my laws. And because you've forgotten my laws, I'm also going to forget your children. You know, we as a generation, between your children and my children, we always want to leave, uh, we, we always want to leave America in better shape than, than how we left it. Um, the problem is, is that we have left it in such in such an evil state, my question is, is will we have that moment of really coming back to Christ and, and repenting as a nation who we are again? I I don't see it, Lance, but, but, but I, but I pray that it would be so. Well, I have hope. And can can I add two? I want to add two little things here and then I'm going to be quiet because you have a lot to cover. (laughs) Okay. Okay. But well, but this is important because you've said so many times, hate is not an emotion with God. It's a priority. That's right. But Paul well, warns us. Well, well, exp- you get, but we got to explain that. You know, the 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 Bible in the Bible, uh, he's talking about. Uh, you're talking about in the sixth chapter of Noah, where God said right. twice that that he hated, that he was sorry that he that he had created people. In other words, he just absolutely hated what had happened, and and we see this a couple times. And 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 again, when we use the word hate, when we talk about which is horrible to do, um, but we use the word hate, oh, I hate that, right? We're, we're showing an emotion about how we feel about it. Right. To God, there's nothing emotional about God. And, and what I want you to understand here is that with God, when he uses the word hate, it is a priority. And priority, what does priority mean? I mean, it's, it's not number one on his list to take care of, yep. right? And that's what God does. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, and you and I both have agreed that the Lord has given us a mission and a task in in these shows that we're doing for you. And the mission and the task is to always show the connectivity of the Jew to the Christian, the Old Testament to the New Testament, the New Testament to the Old Testament, and the Christian to the Jew. So our hope is, our, our, our hope is Christians. Our true hope 
as Christians is what Paul gave us. And before I go any further, I want you to remember that you can always find a continuation of this podcast on the radio show that Pastor Kurt and I do. It's the God Family Country Radio Show. The God Family Country Radio Show is a continuance of the ministry that Pastor Kurt has. Well, of what we have with the podcast. In other words, we're taking the podcast and, and then we're going and doing a two-hour radio show where we can really sort of break them down, which we don't, you know, we have, to be blessed with that much time on the radio, folks, you know, is something that is very, very rare. And, and so, so when, we're, when we're blessed to be able to take that time, uh, we're, we're able to do, we're able to do more for more people to be able to hear it. And, and we are asking for your prayers and blessings over that radio show, That's right. uh, because we plan on taking this and syndicating the radio show. And of course that takes time and effort and money and all those things to go with it. But we're praying that God will, 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 will help us to make sure that we're able to do those things. And, and you and I Look at me, Pastor. Uh-huh. You and I are doing this in God's name, for God's name, and He's given us this opportunity for no for no other reason. And we're not we're not out. We're, there's no money. We don't make any money doing this. No. Both Lance and I have jobs. We we do this for the glory of God and no other reason, and that's to share. But to share His Word so that you have that better understanding. So, how you find the two-hour radio show? It's on every Sunday night here in San Antonio. All you have to do is go to the radio station, 930 AM, The Answer. That's the radio station. It's the Salem Communications Channel. You find Dennis Prager and, you know, Hugh Hewitt and all these guys on there. You know, all all the top ones on there. Also, you find it because they podcast it and stream it. So you get an opportunity to share it with your friends and your family. Okay? So tell them and you yourself. Go to 930amtheanswer.com. When you get there, look for the God Family Country Radio Show. And when you find that, you're going to look for the title of this show. And the title of this show is America is Dying from Lack of Prophetic Knowledge. And that's where you get an opportunity to listen to about two hours of continuation of this in more depth with Pastor Kurt and myself. Okay, enough of the station break. <laughs> they got a good plug on that one, didn't they? I guess so. Well, we had to get it in there. Let's get you know? let's get back to it because I want to I want to so, get this wrapped up. Paul warns Paul warns us in Romans three five. Only Jesus can deliver us from the wrath that's to come. That's all that we're talking about here. Wow, that's pretty simple. Yeah. Yeah, our Lord and Savior is coming back. There's no question about it. He says he's going to, and he's going to. He's given us all the signs, and I, I anticipate him at any time. I don't, I'm not a date setter or anything, but he gave us the signs. If you read Matthew, the 24th chapter, you'll, you'll know very clearly that we are truly living in the last days. And, and, and so is it too late for us? I don't know. It might be. I mean, you see the decay in America, and you have to ask yourself the question, how much longer is God going to tolerate it? It is, in fact, a, a, a we serve a God that is slow to anger, um, uh, and he, is, he, he shows his grace and his mercy everywhere he possibly can, but for how much longer? And, and, and uh, folks, in all these messages that we've been giving to you on this particular topic, it is not God's fault if you don't get the message. He's given us right. this book. I mean, I know this book sits in a lot of people's homes with a lot of dust on it, or they don't have one at all. Um, but it's not for a lack of not being able to have one. They just refuse to have it in their home. They don't, they don't want to know really how horrific of a life they're living. That's why I call this book the living, breathing Word of God, because you don't read it as much as it reads you. And people don't like that. They don't like that at all, because it convicts them. It tells them because they know what they're reading is truth. Well, Hosea 4 and 6 simply says this. It says that my people are destroyed for their lack of knowledge. And because you have rejected the knowledge, God says that I'm going to reject you. We've had a lot of things that have happened to us. God has given us warning after warning after warning. Everything from the blood moons all the way back to, I think, September 11th, uh, 2001. God's been warning America 
of the of the destruction that's coming. That by the way, 9/11 was not a surprise to God. No. God's known he's known about it since the beginning of time. It was a surprise to us, but it wasn't a surprise to God. The thing of it is is that we're heading in an incredible danger zone. And if we're not going to get to a point of repentance, we're going to find ourselves in horrific trouble. And here's what I wanted you to see. There is no substitute for the prophetic word of God. It's time that Christians start sinking their teeth into the word of God. Getting into it, I want, I want you to believe what we're telling you, but I expect you to verify what we're giving you and know that what we're giving you is absolute truth. We have no desire to deceive, just simply give you what God says. As the word was given to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, giving it into us. And you need to understand this word. You don't have to be a master theologian, but this book is not hard to read. It's a very literal book. There is some, uh, there is some apocalyptic literature in a couple of different places, but don't get hung up on that. There's enough there for you to understand so that you have a better understanding of the character of God, the holiness of God. And I think that this is where we need to start as a nation right now, getting back to the Word of God. You're going to need the information that's going to set you apart. We, you're, going to, you're going to need to know, and listen, folks, if, if this is the final generation that Jesus spoke of in Matthew, the 24th chapter, there is more written in this Bible about our generation than any other generation in the Bible. We are at a Matthew 24 moment where Jesus gives us the parable of the fig tree, which is Israel. As Israel begins to bloom again, as Israel becomes to life again, Jesus says, know that I am at the door, that I am ready to open it. I'm about ready to walk through. I'm about ready to come back. And then he goes on to say that this generation will be the terminal generation that will see the return of his coming. Don't be looking for the Lord to be lifting up some whacked out politician that is going to, you know, be your savior to the world. We need to start looking at the prophetic word of God and understanding it so that we can better prepare not only ourselves, but be able to prepare our families because one of two things is going to happen in America. We're either going to come to a point of repentance or the judgment of God is coming. There's only those two options. And I'm not so sure that option one is available any longer. I'm concerned that as a nation that we have arrived at that Jeremiah 7:16 moment, which means we need to prepare for the Hosea four and six moment where we started this. My people are destroyed for their lack of knowledge. And Lance, I, I, I wanna give you uh, some time here. We're gonna be wrapping this up, but throughout this whole series, which has been gut-wrenching for you and I to talk about. It's hard. It, it's, been, it, it's, it's been, you know, when you really open your eyes and you look and you see what what we have done to ourselves and what we have created and the absolute evil that surrounds it. Um, it's not just abortion. It's, it's, the, it's the complete leaving the word of God and, and saying God doesn't exist. You, know, you may not be saying that, but I'm telling you most of the nation is. Churches are empty. Yeah. Some of them are empty because they should be empty because they don't teach the word of God. Thank God they are empty. But it, it's, a, it's a serious state of affairs that we're in right now. Yeah, and you, you know, Pastor, the sadness of it is that I, I truly believe in my heart from everything I've studied about our nation, the history of our nation from its inception uh, to the pilgrims before the pilgrims ever came here, that this nation is a nation of God, by God, for his own will. And there's reasons for that, which I've done in the God Family Country radio show before. Um, and to see where we're going now, it's we, we the, as a nation and a people, we have turned so far away from the Father's intent for what our nation is meant to be. 
Right. The, the pilgrims, before they came over here, they were sifted and sorted by God himself again and again and again as people to come here. And when they came here to this land, they came here. They came here through every extreme adversity you can think of. 50% of them died once they got here, and they were given an opportunity to go back. And you know what they said? They said it in the Mayflower Compact. No, we've come to this land to be able to build a land where we can worship God and our Jesus Christ. And the government that they built from that built a government on that foundation. They used to pass the Bibles out from, from Congress. They, Congress had Bibles printed and distributed throughout the little, the little villages and the little communities across the land. And now as a nation, we're pulling away from God. And I'm telling you, it's happening to us, folks. Our very, our land borders are under assault. Think, I've never heard of these things in this nation before. And it's because of our depravity and our sin. Right. And, and as time goes by, you see it happens so gradually and so little, you don't really think about these things. But let me re- just remind you again of some of the, of some of the boundaries we've crossed with God. And we'll wrap it up. We've taken prayer out of the schools. That happened in 1962. In 1963, we actually pulled Bible reading out of the school completely. No Bible reading in any public school system since 1963. Again, in 1973, 10 years later, we had one of the worst things that we've ever done. We've murdered 64 million babies now with Roe v. Wade. That's and counting. By the way, in America, we're increasing that number by a million each year. In 2013, we had the Defense of Marriage Act that was struck down, saying that marriage was no longer between a man and a woman. It's one of the most unthinkable things I could ever imagine. I mean, how how the nation was ever to to, to continue to grow in population, I have no idea. Um, Somebody has some screwy way of, of somehow being able to create babies. But God created marriage to protect the family and look after, look after the family and to see the family grow and, and flourish. We have the DOMA, the DOMA Act that I mentioned about, the Supreme Court Act that allowed same-sex marriage. Marriage was a covenant relationship between God and a man and a woman, and we've destroyed it. Again, Israel is something that our nation is in the process of protecting. But I would tell you that the damage is done because of what they've done with the Iran deal. And what's happened with the Iran deal to, to literally put Israel in a place of danger and even the United States in a place of danger. We've divided the state of Israel into a two-state solution at the UN because of the UN Security Council. These are all direct violations against God. And my point is this. If we are not going to get back to basics, we're going to lose our nation and the judgment of God is coming. And I pray that that doesn't happen. I want to pray over all of you right now. Father, I ask that uh, this, this message goes out and that people are not deceived by what we're saying. We love our nation. We love America. We love everything it used to stand for, Father. I pray that you'd be a blessing over all that hear this message and that they will start to work in their own lives and their own families and in their neighborhoods and be able to talk about these issues, to, let this, to, to share the boundaries that we have crossed and that you would forgive us, Father, that you would humbly, as we come before you humbly, that you would forgive us and that you would hear our prayers and that you would not turn your back on, on the United States and that you would bless the United States abundantly. There are people in this nation that love you, Father. It seems far and few, I know, but we love you. And so, Father, we ask that you'd be an anointing blessing over all of this, and we give you the praise and glory in this prayer, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 As always, we close with the priestly blessing over your life, and we pray you receive it now. Now may the Lord bless you, and may the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you and give you his peace. May you walk and read and understand the knowledge of God, his prophetic word, his word, because his word is truth. And may you be richly blessed by it. In Jesus' name, amen. This is the word in high resolution, and we pray that you and your family will remain safe and that America will continue on. In Jesus' name, amen. God willing, we'll see you soon.